We're going to use our formula then. You're going to get as long as the absolute value of r is less than one. Yes. Is the absolute value of r less than one in this case? Yeah. What is r? Two thirds. Two thirds. One. Yeah. No. A, a, a sub. So a sub one over one minus r is the formula. It was on the front, the front page there on the quiz. So s equals a sub one, which is one. six. Put one in there, you get you get one here, right? This is the zero power is one times six is six. One minus r, which is two thirds. Right. What's one third minus two thirds? One third. One, one is three thirds. Thirds is one third. Three thirds minus two thirds is one third. How do we divide six by one third? Six times three. One times three over one. That's weird. And now we have eight. I got one right. Maybe more. Okay, what do we say about number nine? Doesn't exist. Doesn't exist because I got that wrong. Five half is too big. Five half is too big. We can't do it. I got the past too big. Okay, if we stick R into that formula, what happens? Let's do that because the thing you gotta actually yeah, be careful about is you could just plug all the numbers in. Let's see what would happen. Nothing bad happens. S equals a sub one. What's a sub one? one. It's one. You put one there. One minus one is zero. To the zero power is one. One minus r. One over. That's two halves. Minus five halves. Three halves. Negative three halves. Divide by the reciprocal. Negative two thirds. We got an answer. Right? And if you're just cooking along and doing your test or whatever, and you get negative two thirds, and you met that in the answer, like sometimes we're lucky, and when we do something that we're not supposed to do or that doesn't work, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, like this, um, it makes not yeah not make any sense. Like, and it's really obvious. Like, you divide by zero, you take the square root of negative. We try to take the log of a negative, or something weird happens. Like, it, it just does not compute. It breaks math. Okay. But makes come flying over. In this case, yes. it doesn't. There doesn't seem to be anything immediately strange about this. Okay, you have to think about it a little bit more to get come, to come up with. This is weird. Is it something weird about this? Does, does it exist or doesn't? It doesn't exist. The point I'm making okay. here is that, oops, we didn't pay attention to that. We just plugged everything in. Okay. We got a number. Right now, it did break math. Right? What's that now? If it was, if this was just an equation, it worked. Yeah, plugging those numbers in, that's how we get negative two thirds out of that equation. Now, if we think about what we're trying to find, the number negative two thirds is a strange result. Why is it a strange result? It's negative because it's negative. Less than one. Less than one. It's less than a one in the first place. A sub one itself is. One. Okay, it's less than a. And then what's after that? What's after a, a sub one? Something bigger than one, right? So we take one and we add something bigger than one, and add something bigger than that, and add something bigger than that. Oh. Bigger than that bigger. They're all positives for one thing. So anything less than one would end up in a strange row. Now I see. Maybe it will. In this case, it's something. It's like a red flag. A it's negative? a terrorist number. Negatives aren't red flags. Is that what you mean? No, I'm saying like it being less than a one in the first. That's a, that's a red flag. Well, maybe. If you have a negative r, you can get a sum, as long as that negative r is between 0 and negative 1. Yeah. yeah. You get these numbers without that. Well, the final, the final thing that s is equal to, if it's a negative, it's probably a little function. It, it might warrant a little investigation. But as long as r is less than 1, or the absolute value of r is less than 1, uh, and it is a geometric series, then we can use that formula. We can find this out. So it's a tricky formula. It can be, yeah. You gotta you gotta pay a little more attention to it before you just start plugging numbers in. You gotta make sure that the absolute value R is less than right. Really, really key. Okay, so a ball, which I imagine is red. I imagine is really blue. Falls. I imagine yellow. <laughs> it falls 40 feet. It falls 40 feet. Then it bounces up to 
75% 3 fourths of what its previous height was. So now it's at 30 feet. It's at 30 feet, yeah. So this is... So in a non-physical world, that ball would just keep bouncing and the amount would just yeah. keep getting yeah. smaller. We talked yeah. about it in the last class. So there, the, one of the reasons, or a few reasons, why the ball actually stops bouncing at some point is that there's energy lost, or well, converted. Converted to other energy. Like the friction between the ball and the ground creates some, well, a little, little bit of heat. The lines from like the bounce and stuff. Mm -hmm. There's, there's the friction, there's the, the air. Yeah, air resistance, all sorts of things. Like it, it, it's, you know, this energy is not destroyed, it's converted to other kinds of energy, or it's transmitted from the ball to air molecules, and they take some of that energy away. But if in ideal conditions, there's no friction, no air, and all that kind of stuff, all the, the ideal conditions you like in physics, uh, then we, uh, we see a ball bounce forever and ever and ever. Yeah. That would be awesome. But we'll just, we'll just kind of take it to be an infinite number of bounces, okay? It bounces and it bounces and it bounces. It just keeps coming up. Every time it bounces up, it's, it's three-fourths of what it was before. So it comes down and it bounces up to three-fourths of 30. All right, so how high is that? Uh, what's our, uh, 22. 22.5 feet. 30 times three-fourths, 22.5. And, and it keeps getting lower and lower and lower and lower, three fourths of what it was before. We have three terms in this series. Forty. So first it falls forty, and then it comes up here, right? And it's going to fall another thirty, and it's going to fall another twenty-two point five, and on and on it could go forever. Okay. Plus. So how far does it travel in all when it's all done? Okay. Well, it starts at 40. And what's R? 3 fourths. 3 fourths. We're multiplying by 3 fourths every time. So S equals A sub 1, which is 4. We call this ball a swing, and we call bouncing swinging. This would be the swing problem from the homework. It's a bouncing swing. Don't confuse you, Gordon. He likes to do that. It's just so easy. Okay, so now we're going to write a repeating decimal as a rational number, a fraction. Does anybody? So we first need to take this and, and write it as the sum, right, an infinite geometric series sum of an infinite number of terms in the geometry system. So how, how do we do that? Wow. What was our first term? 0. 0.5. 0. 0.5. The first term was 0. 0.5, which is, how? what, what is this in a fraction? Five fifths. Oh, okay. We can do half. We can do 0. 0.5. Or uh, one half, yeah. Uh, it's just in the end, it might be hard to, uh, I don't know, figure out the denominator, figure out Maybe, maybe not. Uh, what's a sub 2? What are we going to add to 0.5 to get the 0 0.05? Right? We leave a blank here so that like when we add these together, we don't nothing carries, nothing happens to that 5. And here we get a second 5. And that's 5 over 100. We'll do a third one, 0 0.005, 5 over 1,000, plus follow that pattern forever. We got 5 tenths plus 5 hundredths plus 5 thousandths plus 5 ten thousandths plus 5 hundred thousandths, and so on and so on and so on it goes. Is that geometric? Is that a geometric pattern, geometric series? If it is, then what is R? 1 over 10, multiply 5 tenths by uh, 1 tenth and you'll get 5 over 100 because the denominator gets multiplied.
multiply by 10, and then multiply by 10, you just put a zero on the end of the code. <coughs> so R is 10, or sorry, 1 tenth, and A sub 1 is 5 tenths. And this is an infinite geometric series, so 5 tenths is A sub 1. Five tenths over nine tenths. Five tenths times ten ninths. Cancel and get five ninths. What's the fraction form of pi? There isn't one. If there is one, there's nothing to break math. Would it break math? Uh, since it's an irrational number, yeah. By breaking, by breaking that, I mean like everything that black holes have consumed would be spit out, and it's just like the whole universe would run in reverse. Like it's just not possible. It's just not a rational number. It's an irrational number. It's an irrational number. So <laughs> uh, that does it for the review. I want to do uh, like a little bit of a harder repeating decimal here. Unless there's questions about other things. Yeah, of course. I mean, we can do like repeating decimal with the homework if you have a question on that or anything else with the homework. Or not the homework. What, what question do you have on that? Number six. Number six. Point six three six three six three. Right, that's the thing that repeats. Right, Going to be a little bit clever and a little bit following the, the lead of the previous problem. Right, write some terms that will add up and give us a six three, then a six three, then a six three, then a six three, then a six three. In the same way that we did with the point fives repeating. So how would we do that? How what would we make a sub one? Point six three. Six three. Yeah. We'll make each term have a six three in it, and then we'll we'll have like zero fillers so that every time when we add up all of these decimals we get six three, six three, six three, six three. Um six three over uh, over ten. This number? Okay. This number would be sixty three over one hundred. Oh because this three's in the hundreds place. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. That would be the last one. Okay, what's the what's the next term? Zero, zero, six, three. Right. Those two zeros, when you think about adding these together, and we try to add zero to three, well, nothing will happen, right? Like it won't change to three at all, and we'll just bring that three through, we'll bring that six through. If you add, you, you do point six, three, and point zero, zero, six, three. You add them together, those are zeros, and we add them together, we get three, we add and get six, we add to three, we add to six, right? If we continue this pattern, and we add another number, 0, 0, 0, 0, 6, 3, and we get another 6, 3. And it keeps going if we keep following this pattern. So there's our uh, A sub 3. OK, in a fraction form, what's our A sub 2? A tenth, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands. This would be 63 over millions. Hundred thousands, millions. 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 So now we've written it. Such a way we've created a pattern that we can add up forever and come up with this decimal. But now we can represent each little piece of it as a fraction. Um, so from here to here, what is r? We're multiplying by r, which is what? One over 100. The actual number is one over 100. Multiply the denominator by 100. Okay. Well, that's definitely less than one, right? So r is less than one. It's a geometric series. It works, so we set out 
here. The first term is 63 over 100. Over 1 minus 1 over 100, because that's R. What's 1 minus 1 over 100? Yeah, we want to, um, not that it can't work if we use those decimals, but it's got to be a fraction anyway, right? So maybe if we work with fractions. Okay. Seems like a good idea to me. So 63 over 100 times, or yeah, 63 over 100 times 100 over 99. Yeah. How about the 63 and the 99? They, I know they have a factor of three in there. They're both divisible by nine. Yeah, seven and 11. So seven over 11. Sense? So if the uh, if the number that was on top uh, that was in the numerator, if it was uh, greater than the ones in the denominator, that would make it to uh, um, not existent. The thing that would make this sum not existent would be if this number was less than one. Is this the number you're talking about? Yeah. Yeah. If the number in the numerator were bigger than the denominator, yeah, then that overall would be bigger than one, which means it would be not. So as long as, I mean, you can think of it as a proper fraction, as long as the numerator is smaller than the denominator, then there you go. So when there, you know, when there is like one that says not existent, that's not existent, that's bigger, do you just put non-existent? Yeah. Or you say the sum doesn't exist. Sum's not good. The real math word for it would be, let's go back to one where this happens. This happens. It breaks now. Yeah. This yeah. one, the sum Here. diverges. Why do they need a fancy word? Why do they need a fancy word? Why can't we just have normal people? Because every uh, field of study wants to feel special and different from every other field of study. And so we use special so words. We need a field. I designate a field devoted entirely to Gordons. No. No. Any Under what conditions Gordon? does a Gordon no converge? Converge or diverge? Converge. Yeah. On a pie? Is a set of all Gordons a ring or a group? A set of all Gordons? Is it a Boolean ring? No. A set of all Gordons is a gaggle. <laughs> transitive. No, it's a transitive gaggle. Why well, gaggle? Like, so many options. Fine. It's a murder of Gordons. Like a okay. murder of crows, but with Gordons. Uh, so murder of sounds about right. So now we're getting to 12.5. Unless we have more questions. Any more questions? Oh, I was going to show you a harder decimal. Let me show you that. Can it be a pod? Why is it harder? Because you want me to set you off into the world without having seen something more difficult? No. <laughs> That's silly. All right. So what about 0.25372372372? Ooh, this requires creativity. Yeah, you have to be a little bit creative. Now, there is a part that repeats, and we'll assume that it just keeps on repeating. If there's that 0.25 before everything. I think he just ruined it. Get rid of it. Maybe we can get rid of it. Maybe we can do this. Mm -hmm. We can do 0.25. Okay. Well, 0.25 you can run as a, as a fraction, right? So we can like, add it on to whatever fraction we find. We'll add that to 0 0.00. 372, 372, 372, so on. Make that, and I make this 0.25 separate than the, yeah. the uh, thing, and then just work it out. And just wait this one out wait as an infinite geometric series, and then we'll add this on at the end. Right. Okay. So we'll just keep carrying the 0.25 through here. Uh, let's write, like, what do you think our first term would be as we add up an infinite geometric series here? Just like, the first term here was 0.63, the first term here was 0.5, right? and then we put zeros as placeholders in the next terms. Um, it would be 372. So it would be? No, point zero zero three seven two. Right. And the next one? Um, point zero 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 three seven two. Got it. Plus, I just keep putting all the zeros until you get out to the next 372, and it goes on forever. Okay, so this is 0.25. This is 1 fourth. And all of this is an infinite geometric series. So 0.25, let's first write these as fractions. Uh, I prefer to do 
372 over 100,000. 100, yeah, 10,000, 10,000, 100,000. Wait, 10, 100. <laughs> Thousand, ten thousand, hundred thousand. Mm. Ten thousand over. This this we know is a hundred thousand. Ten million. No, I mean that it'd be a hundred million. Hundred million. Darn. Um, we'll have to do a lot of zeros. Plus any it goes on and on and on. So, is this a geometric series? Do we have an R? Yeah. Do we multiply this by to get this? Um, a thousand? Why a thousand? Because um, how I see it is like a thousand has three zeros, so when you put three zeros um, on there. Put three more zeros on, you get two millions? Yeah. So, yeah. Hundred thousands. If we put three more zeros on there, we go from hundred thousands to hundred millions. Yes. Yeah. So R is what again? Thousand. Well, three seven two or. Do I multiply this by three seven two? Mm -hmm. Oh, one uh, one over. One over a thousand. Okay. Uh, here I'll write this as a fraction. One fourth plus. Now we know what a sub one is. We know what R is. Right. Mm -hmm. A sub one is what? this as much as possible and then get a common denominator and add them. I'm trying to make an so let's see, what do these two have? I know they have a two in common, right? Yeah. So let's start there. But don't you know, wouldn't you have to make the one fourth a one half? Why one half? Because of the point two five. Point two five is one fourth. Six hundred and twenty four thousand oh, seven hundred forty seven oh, over I thought that one fourth was like something totally different, and so I over thought over ninety nine thousand ninety. Okay. One eight six. They can probably be saying two. Go lower. Nine nine five zero. These are still divisible by two. This is how it goes sometimes. Nine three. Thousand three hundred twenty-five divisible by thirty-one. Add it. Add it. Something. 
from the chain. Then we need to start working back up in order to get it calmed down. 31 is a prime number. Soft stroking my back. That's not something. That doesn't remind me of something. Okay, so we need a common denominator, which means we need to multiply it down to 325 by 4. So they don't have any factors in common, so we're just going to multiply them together. So this is 8,325 over. <laughs> 31. I have to type them. Plus 31 over 37,300. I have that common denominator. 8,356 over 37,000. Uh, these are both divisible by two. Yes. Yeah. Yep. According to my calculator, it supplies down to 2,089 over 9,325. Well, there's calculator. That is true. Yeah. We don't do this to you. Oh, is I wrong about that? I was wrong about that. 2089 times the You're stumping yourself. I don't think it's with your own problem. Yes? Well, your crowd is probably broken. 
That's really appreciated. Yeah. Being sarcastic, you're not doing those things. At least some of you aren't. Um, so the idea here is if we have a repeating piece, let's break that off from the piece that's not repeating. Add that on on. At the end. Yeah. OK. Let's do another one. No. Or not. All right, so now we're going to. Um, Talk about recursively defined sequences, which I think, uh, in some ways is, is easier. Defining fun, defining sequences recursively is the thing that most of you want to do anyway. Okay, so let me show you. Let's start with a, a simple sequence that we're fairly familiar with. Um, okay, can you find the pattern? At six. Add six, okay? Yep. Basically what you just did, saying add six, is the recursive definition. Okay, to say to take the, the term before and add six to get the next term, that's a recursive kind of a definition. Okay? So what what we have to do though is write this recursive definition in terms of an equation. Okay? Not the same as explicit. So first let's let's write down the, the, the rule. Okay. The rule is the formula. The rule is what we've been doing. Okay. So can someone give me the rule as we, as like you might have written on the quiz today if I had asked you for the rule for this arithmetic sequence? Um, times two plus one plus three. What's that? Times two plus one. Times two plus one? Um, plus plus two plus six plus. Two plus six. Two plus six. Two plus six. Exactly. This is arithmetic, so it's a sub one plus n minus one times d. Yeah, so it's plus so two plus two plus, two plus one n minus one times six. If we distribute the six, we get six n minus six. So we bind these together. Four plus six. Okay. So here's what this rule allows you to do. It allows you to go all the way out to a sub whatever. Let's say it's a sub 100. You take 100, you put it into the rule, the formula, and it tells you what the 100 term is. OK? That's good. That's a good deal. Huh? That's recursive, good. the recursive definition says if you want to find a sub n or if we use the example of a sub 100 again, recursively, when I say add 6, like, how do I, how do I get this term then if, if all I am going to say is I use the pattern to add 6? Just keep adding 6 to it over and over and over. So I'd have to add 6 to something to get a sub 100. 2 plus 6 plus 6. So you just add 6, add 6, add 6, add 6, right? So to get a sub 100, you go back to a sub 
99, and you would add 6, right? But in order to get a, 99, you have to go back to a sub 98. So in general, so we've made a little stop here at a sub 99 and a sub 100. In general, if we're way out here, we want to find a sub n, we need to go back to what? a sub whatever we know. I mean, a sub, n. what's before n? a. n minus 1. n, n minus n. 1. 1. Right? 100 minus 1, 99. This is a sub 6, a sub 6, a sub 5, a sub 4, a sub 3, right? The number, the, the term before that is just one less in the index. You take the index, you subtract one, you have the number before. So let's write this in the equation a sub n. You can find a sub n by doing what? Plug it in one, uh, one n, that's one n, for the uh, formula over here. There's plug in So this here, um, whether you look at it this way or this way or whatever, this is called an explicit definition. Explicitly, it tells you how to find the nth term. This term tells you how to find the nth term in terms of the term before it, maybe two terms before it, three terms before it. Yep. So, if I'm at a sub 100, now I don't know what a sub 100 is, I don't know what that number is, but I can call it a sub 100, which means the 100th term, right? If I want to find the 100th term, I have to go back to the 99th term and add 6 to it, right? So for the nth term, I go back to the term before it, a sub n minus 1, and I add 6 to it. But you would have to know what 99 is to get to 100. So if True. you don't know what 99 is, that you means you're going to keep going back, going back, going back, going back until you get to like uh, nine, uh, Start 32 a, and a of uh, 6, which we do know uh -huh. is going to be 32. Yep. And you just work from there. To actually get it, yeah. But the, the, the pattern is for any, any a sub n, any term here, we're kind of saying just that. We're saying you got to go to the term before it and start from there and add 6. Right. What's the term before a sub n? Uh, a n negative 1. a sub n minus 1. Um, minus 1. Okay. What do we do with a sub n minus 1 to get a sub n? Right. You add 6. Okay. So this is the, you know, the mathy way, writing an equation to recursively define a sequence in the way that it comes naturally to you. Right? Because most of the, not most of the time, but there are several occasions, have been several occasions when I ask for the rule, which means a formula, and a person will write down add six. Well, that's not that's not a rule, that's not a formula, that's not explicit. That's what we've been doing so far. This is more what they're saying. They're saying take the number before this one, the number before this one, and add six. So let me give you an example. A sub seven is equal to a sub seven minus one. Six or plus six, not four plus six. So a sub seven is equal to a sub what's a sub what? Six. 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 Do we know a sub six? Nope. No, we don't. Okay. Thirty-two. What? Oh yeah, 32. a sub six <laughs> is thirty-two. Um, thirty-two plus six is a sub seven. So a sub seven is thirty-eight. Well, now that we know a sub 7, we can find a sub 8. A sub, a sub 8 is equal to a sub 7 plus 6. But it's going to take you a while to get up to 99 right. to get to 100. That's why we usually That's don't true. do that. We yeah. like explicit rules quite a bit. We like the formula. Yeah, we like explicit rules. That's an explicit definition. Okay. And this... This is part of a recursive definition. This is what I want you to think about. Right, let's go to a new page. I will paste this in here. If I only give you this rule, we could construct an explicit rule. If what? Well, not necessarily. You can't necessarily construct an explicit rule just because you have 
a recursive definition. Could you recreate the, the sequence on the previous page? No. Why not? Because you don't know where to start. Where do you start? That's what you need to know. That's the rest of the recursive definition. I gotta tell you where to start. If you need one term to start, I need to tell you that. If you need two, I need to tell you that. Okay? So, what more information do you need? Where do you start? A sub one. A sub one. Do you remember what a sub one was? Two. Yeah, two. Two. Yeah, two. two. So I have to tell you a sub one is two. In order to find a sub two, well that's equal to a sub two minus one plus six. A sub two is equal to a sub, well two minus one is one. A sub one is two plus six. Eating and sleeping is all insomnia. What? All insomnia. Ah. Everybody's thinking. That's actually pretty fun. That's the funniest thing I've ever said. Gordon, look what you started. So much talking in there. So what I want you to do, I want you to write me a recursive rule, a recursive definition for a sequence that I have here. Yes, sir. Recursive rule? Recursive, yeah, not explicit, but recursive. This is arithmetic? Uh, well, you decide. So explicit is like taking, uh, like for the last one, it's plus six. I got it. No, the recursive rule looks like this. You gotta tell me how to find a sub n in terms of a sub n minus one, and then you gotta tell me where to start. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. one. Yeah, you gotta give me an a sub one. So you could technically give me an a sub five, right? But that's that just kind of wouldn't be polite. You don't have to go back. Yeah, you have to go back to find a sub one. Yeah. But hey, you know you can do it. That's like but, worse than biting your. But tendency. if you're if you're nice and uh, and you want to make it easiest, go you give me a sub one. one, right? So give me a term or terms that I need to, to get started, and then we'll give me a recursively defined. Uh, it's pretty simple. It's challenging. Well, it should be pretty basic. Yeah. Okay, good. Well, it's just really easy. I not like doing it No, it should be pretty basic. self fondly me. No, not to. Don't yeah. say that. <laughs> well, I'm doing it. You don't say that out loud. Uh, Who says that out loud? Guess what, Gordon? Oh, what's it? Guess what? to what? A sub n minus, one. A sub n minus one. one, and add 13 to that number. So if I want a sub two, I need to go back to a sub one, because two minus one is one, and add 13. Well, I have a sub one, so I can get rolling. I can get started on this. All right, we're gonna give you a different kind of Explicitly, but recursively. A sub n minus 1 times 2, a sub 1 equals. Why are you just. <laughs> I'm so sick of myself. 
I give you another one. <laughs> that was a good potato one. <laughs> So A sub 1 can be whatever we want as long as it's in the sequence. Like you can only mm -hmm. figure, really figure it out. Like with the, if you have an explicit rule, you can only figure it out past what A sub 1 is. Because the further back you go, when you get them to A sub 1. Brennan, is this is math one. What? Oh, that's right. Neither am I. In order to create the distance, it's just a sequence. Why did you whatever you give me up I did I tripped on trip you. Oh no, that was the one who tripped you. Yeah, why did you trip you? Because I stepped in front of you. Yeah, that's but if I gave you a sub one minus one to much. the rest of the sequence would still be right. You just wouldn't have They'd be out of place. They'd be out of phase. They'd be in the right position. Those masks look sick. So A sub N is equal to A N minus one times twenty five. I'm gonna write it like this: point five times A sub N minus one. One half times a sub n minus one, whatever. If you have times 0.5, that's fine. But I like, you know, the times point two. Oh, well, there you go. Times negative two. Times negative two. Oh wait, no. Is that right? That would be like not right. No, I'm. <laughs> I was not thinking. Not right. <laughs> Divided by two, sure. Okay. Yeah. Times one half by two. Six. Yeah, but yep. yeah, but didn't you say you yeah, didn't want oh, it to be divided? You didn't want it to be uh, times. Oh, so what that meant, well, what it, I think you're you're talking about here is if we're gonna like follow all like, the the formulas and guidelines and stuff for geometric sequences, which this happens to be. Yeah. Then when we think about R, like when we go into fill in it, formulas with R in it, yeah. then R needs to be the number that we multiply by. But if so, you can write a recursive rule that makes this sequence. Divide by two works just as well as times one half. So it doesn't matter. Nope. Yeah, if, I, if I'm just asking if, it. If you're just trying to find the recursive uh, rule, then it's fine. Yeah. But when you're trying to find R. And when you, if, if, if you're trying to think about R, then R is specifically a number that you multiply by. So you got to think about it that so way. So instead of dividing by two, you just take it uh, times 25. Yeah, same thing. So, okay. Um, is, it, is this my recursive rule? Done? I need a starting point. Uh, yeah. A sub 1 equals 3B. Or A sub 1 equals 20. Or A sub 5 equals 5. Or A sub 2 equals 40. You got A sub 1 is the best thing to give. It's, it's a natural starting point. But, like, what I'm trying to say here is that if someone were to give you A sub 3 instead of A sub 1, which doesn't mean you can't figure it out, you just kind of have to do the pattern. So you just got, uh, so you always have to put a sub 1 in there, so if they give you like a sub 3, just go back in, yes. in the uh, in the end, the recursive rule and stuff like that, and you just find a, a 1. Yeah. Yep. But if you're, if you're a, 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 a nice, uh, a polite mathematician, you give a sub 1 as the starting point. Can you be an impolite mathematician? Be. Are you going to be nice on the test? With, the one. with recursive rules, yeah. Okay, good. So now that we have the starting point, we can find the explicit rule. Not necessarily. Like this permit. What do you mean? It's sometimes easier to find a a rule, explicit rule, formula, 
because it would be hard to figure out what the pattern from one number to the next is. Like n to the third, right? If we did n to the third, a sub n equals n to the third. Well, this is an explicit rule. All right. So a sub one is one to the third, so we have one. Two to the third is eight. Three to the third is twenty-seven. Four to the third is sixty-four. Now the the rule, the formula, the explicit rule is fairly simple. But what's what would be the recursive? What would be the pattern that you get from one to eight, and then from eight to twenty-seven? Like so it's hard to go from explicit to recursive, but it's not hard to go from recursive to explicit. It, in some in some cases, either way, it's fairly fairly simple. For geometric and arithmetic, especially since we've already been working with them, we can come up with either one we want. Sometimes it's easier to come up with the explicit rule, like in this sequence. Sometimes it's easier to come up with the recursive rule. Like, here's a recursive sequence. It's called the Fibonacci sequence. Now, can you find, like, what's the pattern? What do I do to get the next number? Yeah, the three before it. The one before it? The two numbers, they come before the one you want, you add them together, you get. So you add the first and the second, you get the third, add the second and the third, you get the fourth. Okay? So we see the pattern, we see the recursive pattern, but then what would be the explicit rule for this one? That's much, much harder to do. Is it, does it exist? Yeah. Are you just in shots? I don't remember. It's very, it's a very, it's not that complicated, but it's fairly complicated. What's that? When you know something, you don't figure it out really fast. You never know that myself. You could look it up. You could find, you could look up explicit rule for the Fibonacci sequence, and you'll find something. Or you could just Wikipedia the Fibonacci sequence. And come up with that. Okay, pay attention, please. Okay, so to find the implicit, or not the implicit, the uh, recursive rule would be tricky. Like I don't know, if we add seven and then. But then we add, I don't know, is there a pattern in the numbers that we add, maybe? Add, okay, for the first one, for the first one we add seven. For yeah. the second one, we add 21. No, 19. 19. Uh -huh. oh. And we add 37. Is there a pattern in that? Maybe there is, but maybe there's not. Then maybe we add 29 and then 47. Maybe. And then 39 and then 50. But the point is, it's more natural to think of this in terms of, oh, just cube the number that you're on, like cube one, cube two, cube three, cube four. This one is, is more natural to think of in a recursive way to take the terms before. By the way, let's write this recursive rule for this Fibonacci sequence. What would be the recursive rule? If I want a sub n, what do I do? A, 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 a sub n minus one. We're definitely going to do something with a sub n minus 1, right? If I wanted to get 5, I need to do something with 3. Plus a sub n minus 2. Exactly. Okay. I'm going to go to a sub n minus 1 and add it to a sub n minus 2. Right? a sub n minus 2 means two terms before a sub n. Okay. If we're out of a sub n, the term before that is 1 less than n. The term before that is 2 less than n. The term before that is 3 less than n. The term before that is 4. So you take a, 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 a n minus one, and then you take a n plus a n minus two, because right. the rule is you're taking uh, the, la and the last number with, uh, the first, uh, with the number that you're on now. Yeah. The next. Yes. So like we have a sub one, a sub two, a sub three, a sub four, a sub five, a sub six, a sub seven. So if we want a sub eight, a sub eight, we want to take a sub eight minus one Jeez. plus a sub eight minus two, that's a sub 7 plus a sub 6. 8 minus 2 is 6. Okay, so it so happens we have a sub 6, we have a sub 7. So we take a sub 7 is 13 plus 8. So a sub 8 is 1. one. Yay. So and how we, did they go from 0 to 1 in the first place? Well. Yeah, they didn't go from zero to one. What they did was start with a n, one, one and one. So what if we started one. with zero? Nothing would happen. But uh, no, you can start. You can start this sequence with zero. Zero plus one is one. One plus one is two. 
going that direction is actually a pretty interesting thing. Okay. Try it. We're not doing it right now. I give you this. Is that enough? No. What do I also have to tell you? A, a, a one and a two. There you go. A sub one is one, a sub two is one, and now you can go because you need two turns now to get to the next turn. Okay. Uh, I want to tell you about one last thing. It's called iterations. Wait, 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 wait. If you went the other way, wouldn't it just be the same Fibonacci sequence, just getting smaller and it's bigger? I'm going to answer these questions first, the ones that I asked, and then I'll talk to you about that later. So the function is, I even gave you a function. It's f of x equals 2 x plus 1. Okay. Um, and I'll tell you that x sub 0 is uh, 5. I just made that up. Made everything up here. Okay, thank God. Now, now doing iterations is going to act just like a recursive rule. It's like a slightly different uh, look to it, I guess. So if we take f of x sub 0, that's f of 5. That's 2 times 5 plus 1. And I'm just putting 5 into the formula, into the, into the function. Okay. So this is going to be x sub 1. That's going to be 10 plus 1 is 11. Damn. Okay. To get x sub 2, I'm just going to take x sub 1 plug it back in to the formula. Okay. I'm just going to plug it back in here, f of x sub 1. That's uh, f of 11. 2 times 11 plus 1, that's 22, 23x sub 2 is 23. That's our second iteration. Our third iteration, f of 23, that's 2 times 23, 23 plus 1, 46 plus 1, 47, that's x sub 3, that's the third iteration. So iteration, which you may have used or heard the word iteration before, uh, it's, it means iterative, it means it cycles through, it cycles through, it cycles through, you just keep repeating the same thing over and over and over, which is like a recursive rule, right? A recursive rule, you just keep repeating the same pattern over the thing that you just got. But a recursive rule can also be written in terms of an iterative function. Chapter 2 exam.